This is the So Nice Vintage Sewing Planner um, from JoannFabrics.com and I just want to give you a little review overview. It's super cute. I do enjoy the happy planners or these disc style planners. I've also done um, my own where you make your own bullet journal type planners. I, I just like a calendar. That does not mean that I don't completely keep my entire calendar also digitally so that it's on my phone and on my computer and everything's linked, but I still go back and almost always write everything down, keep lists. I am such a list um, list girl. So this is the So Nice Planner. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's a heavy plasticky cover, but it's still soft. It comes with some fun little stickers. Things that say like fabric sale, pattern sale, there's just a few. One thing I have not been able to find are refill pages for this. Like, For instance, if you'd like more stickers, I can tell you this will not be enough and I'm hoping to figure out how to design some stickers of my own with my Silhouette um, vinyl cutter machine. It has um, three pages that are little sleeves. You can put business cards, fabric swatches, um, lots of things like that in them. This one has one big pocket at the bottom, two at the top, this are four, divided into four equal, and then it even has a little zip pocket in it. Um, the sewing planner belongs to, this is your little title page. It does have calendar at a glance for 2020 through 2022. And then this is the little reference sheet. The reference has a glossary, very basic, but a nice little glossary, little hack strips, pattern basics. Um, the glossary is pretty long. I mean, it has French seams and different types of stitching, different three sleeve types. It's, it's, if you know much about sewing, the glossary could be, I mean, there are entire books. Um, here's some fiber facts, which is actually a really great little um, table to look at. And then measurements, body measurements. And it even has a um, sizing chart that's specific to Simplicity, which is kind of cute right here. And then it has this little projects section and the projects, which is something I do anyway, and I've been kind of uh, making do with what's been available, but this one's great. It has your little to-do list that's in a grid, a place you can glue in or staple in some swatches, um, your description of your project, your date, your pattern, the supplies you need, alterations that might need notes for if you're going to make it again. And then it has just a nice little gridded page on this side. And then here's a wonderful measurements um, chart. Very nice. So I haven't found refill pages, but you could probably scan and copy and make more of these. I'm not saying that that's necessarily legal, but if you're doing it just for yourself and not selling them, that's different. Um, and then on the back of every one of these little uh, measurement charts, it has a patterns list. So you could keep track of your patterns, your pattern number, brand, description, size, fabrics, notions, notes, all that sort of thing, especially if they're patterns that you use often. If you sew for other people, this could be very useful because it has a name and a date. So you could put the name of your client, um, their measurements, and especially if you sew for this client often, you could have their specific patterns on the backside of their um, measurements so that you know um, I, I used to make custom swimwear for people and I would keep a little file on them for their that sort of thing which was a great way to keep it um, keep everything together for them and then they could just call and say hey I love this swimsuit I want it in blue with you know floral trim or whatever and I could do it because I had everything there their patterns their measurements what they wanted so this is a really cute little um, projects section the next section is swatches and there's quite a few of these I don't know 10 or so of those. Here's your swatches. Um, I have in the past kept swatch books, not for fabric that I'd purchased and hadn't used, but for projects that I had completed, which was a really fun way to just see what I'd been working on. Um, and this has a nice big spot for a swatch. And then this is really for fabric that you have in your stash or fabric that you've purchased and haven't used yet. How much you have, its width, where you got it, fabric care if you've already pre-washed it because we know we buy fabric pre-wash it stick it in our stash and forget about it so this is a nice little way to just keep track of those and there's four. Oh no there's four so that's 32 places for 32 fabrics again not enough if you're an avid sewer but not terrible then we come to the little calendar section 
and um, it's just January through December. The way it's set up is here's your, your tab for the calendar and each one's going to be a little different. It has um, little tips specific to sewing. So it's like this one says, watch for the new spring catalog. After the holidays, recheck your body measurements. Thanks, we, we know. Wedding is on the way, start sewing now. Not that your wedding is on the way, but if you sew for others, you probably are doing um, something wedding related, whether it's the mother of the bride or um, I used to do weddings and I was always busy January, February, and March doing usually bridesmaids dresses. Um, and then it has goals birthdays, holiday events, purchase goods and finds. Again, this is specific to sewing. I could see it could also work for crafting, but really it's for sewing. Here's your month at a glance. And they're not filled in dates. So this would work for, tw like this is August of 2020 when I'm filming it. So this January will actually be 2021. Um, notes for that. And then it goes into your week at a glance. So here's this with the notes. Here's our week at a glance. Each month's a different color, so it kind of makes it easy. January is this blue color. And then at the end of the month, it just has a little section for notes. And then here's February. The months are all set up the same, but I'll go ahead and show you the cute little pictures. And February's color is sort of a peach. Here's March. And March's color is yellow, a yellow of kind. April. This reminds me of paper dolls I had when I was, I was such a paper doll girl. I loved my paper dolls. And I remember having, they were supposed to be two best friends and one was a black girl and one was a blue eyed blonde like this. And I remember the black girl was my favorite because they had different wig, paper wigs you could put on her and she had the coolest hair. And I used to love to put um, her wigs on because she had lots of really cute um, hair styles that they did for her that were ethnic and adorable and this reminds me a lot of those paper dolls that I had. wish I still had those. Those were so fun. Um, so anyway that's and it's lavender for April. Here's May and if you notice the fashion is actually sort of seasonal so this these are spring fashions. Um, here's May and May has gone back and this is very 1940s wartime um, on this page and this one's uh, late 60s, early 70s over here, very fun. You'll never measure up to me. They all have sort of funny little sayings. I think the inside covers are pretty too. They kind of more, remind me of origami paper. May's color is a green. Here's June. Very cute. And it's uh, blue. July. Again, it's looking wartime in the style. July's color is back to that peachy pink. Here's August. Love this, how fun. Very much the new look that was 1949 into 1950. Again, another pretty paper. Back to the yellow. September, nice gold tab. And look at the cute little shorts set with the overskirt. Oh, those are cute. I love this. I would wear that today. I think that's so fun. That reminds me of wallpaper my grandmother had. <laughs> and it's the lavender. Here's October. We're getting into coats. Very fun little trapeze swing coats with the raglan sleeve. And look at this, 1930s. I think I see, I've seen Ginger Rogers dance in something that looks like that. Nice plaid for October, November. Oh, isn't that adorable? I love all the little fashion stuff. That's the best part. Um, I will say I don't love their sayings. As I'm reading them, they are so not applicable. My problem is that I don't have motivation. My problem is that I do not have enough days in my lifetime. I have so much motivation and so many ideas and just not enough time. So if I could do one thing, I would rewrite these to um, true crafters and seamstresses who are never without motivation or inspiration. They're just without enough time on their hands. So that's November blue and here's December fun look at the peplum on that nice 
December's red, red and pink. So that's the whole calendar planner. It's adorable. Um, the back has, just looks like pattern paper, pattern designs on it. It's called Simplicity Vintage. I think it's super cute and I really like it and I'm excited to use it. I probably will wait. My current calendar runs out in October. So I'm trying to decide if I want to take my last two and put them to the front and use this starting in November or not. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. I just wanted to mention how much this costs. So I, it was original cost was $50, $49.99 and I got it for $34.99. Um, and it was free, no shipping because I did the curbside pickup. As far as I know, these are not available to order um, and ship to your home. You have to be able to do a curbside pickup or go into the store to buy them. When I was looking, I could not find it to ship to my home, at least from Joann's. I didn't search everywhere.